Welcome. I am so happy to be with you again. My name is Linda Kleinard. I'm also known as Grandma Linda. I've been called Dr. Kleinard, but I'm most honored to be here today to be able to share stories with you, but also to do activities from the new edition of my book, Family Time Reading Fun. This is the fifth edition and it just came out about a week ago. And so I was so happy that they let me, my publisher supported letting me say a special thank you to our six grandchildren. And was, I was able to set different activities that we'll be doing. Oh, and there's a little about me and about my mother. And when I was two years old, my grandmother, Belita, they came from Mexico when my mother was only eight years old. And I tell that story too, because I'm so glad that we can learn together and that regardless of the language that you speak at home, you can speak that first and then support children to learn English. So one of the things that we, uh, I share in the book and we shared last summer, I was here in July, was a key to literacy. Key number one, literacy is more than reading and writing. So when we do activities, we have to remember that it's not just reading and writing, it's listening, speaking, thinking, reading and writing. That when we do that, as our daughter, when she was very young, would play with the telephone, speak. Oh, when she was on the phone, she'd listen, she'd write, and then she'd read it back to us. Another key to literacy is everyone has literacy strengths. Some are stronger readers. Anne loved to read to her brothers when they were little. Some are thinkers, speakers, and love reading and writing. But the important thing to remember is to stress a strength and nurture a need. So those are two of the 10 keys to literacy I share. And I also share what are influences that influence children in developing literacy. And one of the most important and one of the first ones I mentioned is how important we look at what children's attitudes and interests are for reading, writing, and doing other things, such as our grandson, Russell. From the time he was a year and a half, he loved cars, still loved cars when he was two, still loves cars, Hot Wheels, five, and he's soon gonna be seven and still has Hot Wheels racing all over their house. So attitudes and interests, finding books and stories that children love. And that's why I chose a book today that really is something our family loves. And that's a book called 12 Little Race Cars. And we are going to read that book in a little bit, but I've got 12 little race cars here. We're going to see what happens to them. But before we start that, I'm going to introduce some words from the story to you. So I'm not going to say the word, I'm going to break the word up so I say the first part and the last part. And that's an activity in my book that I call breaking up is hard to do. But it's really not hard if you listen to a word like this. K R. Can you put those sounds together? What word do you think that is? car, you're right, er, ace, race, it's about race cars, tr, ack, ah, oh, they're on a track, that's right, let's try, hmm, those race cars need a cur, ooh, crew, good, and what about race cars having a lot of sp Speed. Speed, that's right. Well, we could do others, but we're going to get into this book so we can have fun. And we might try a few other breakup words, but let's learn about 12 little race cars. What do you know about race cars? There's an activity in my book called Before, During, and After. And it's really important that we ask questions before children read during the time they're reading, and then after. Most people wait till after they finish, 
but we've got to learn what do they know about race cars? Do these look like real race cars? No, these are Hot Wheel cars that I have down here and I have 12 little Hot Wheel cars so they can come in different ways. But the people that wrote this book are Scott and Judy Pruitt and Scott Pruitt is a real race car driver. He's raced real cars around real tracks and we're going to find out Hmm, what's he and Judy, his wife, writing about in this book about 12 little race cars. Well, let's find out. 12 little race, uh, excuse me, 12 race car drivers putting on their suits. Fireproof underwear, whoa, under their clothes and fireproof boots. Why do they have to be fireproof? Right, just in case some fire in the car happens, they won't burn. Starting up their engines, but one won't go. One little race car doesn't make the show. Oh, sorry, Mr. Race Car, you're going to have to go away. Oh, well, let's see. How many does that mean we have left? Oh, 11 little race cars coming fast to race. All drivers trying to set the pace. Oh, but look what happens. One bumps another. Hey, that was me. Oh, one little race car Whoa, won't take the green. That means the green flag doesn't even get to start the race. How many are left now? Oh, we're gonna have to take a car away again. 10 little race cars now. Zooming around the track, one flips over and lands on its back. Oh, the announcer yells, oh no, not that. One little race car cleared off the track. Wow, they're going away fast, aren't they? Oh my goodness. Well, nine little race cars all running lean. That means good gas. And the race is both a man and machine. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Oh boy. God, sputter wheat. What's happening? Mmm. One starts to sputter and choke. Oh no, poor little race car. His engine broke. Oh boy, how many are we gonna have now? Bye, race car. Eight little race cars. Whoa, that's what we got left. To the pits for fuel. That's where their crew helps them get fuel and gas. And the crews are ready and they look really cool. There they are, the crew is ready for them. Well, the driver pulls up and hits, oh no, hits his mark. And the engine, oh boy, stalls and it won't start. Stalling means it's not gonna start. It can't even drive out of the pits. It's all stuck there. Well, seven little race cars and running three abreast. That means there are three across. Well, let's get you guys to go three across then. And that means we're gonna have one over there. Whoa. And one spins out. Oh no, spins out and not up. What a mess. The safety crew takes the driver away and he's out of the race, but he's okay. He's, I'm glad he's okay, aren't you? Six little race cars jockey for the lead. They zip through the, the turns at a high rate of speed. Zoom, zoom! All of a sudden, just a wink of the eye and the lead car stops and the rest go by. Oh, and they all go by him. So how many do we have left? Five little race cars 
racing down the street. One goes for the break, but a little too late. Screech! Oh, he slides off the track and stops in the grass. One little race car couldn't make the pass. Oh boy, sorry guy, you're not in the race anymore. Well, four little race cars, is that what we've got left? One, two, three, four. Four little race cars getting close to the end, moving really fast as they're coming around the bend. That's the curve in the race. Did you know that? That's what a bend does. Mm. One loses his gears. Oh no, and he starts to slow. Poor little race car. That's no way to go. Look at all the gears that would help them shift. Did you know that? Well, look at that. He's got his wheel. But there are now, we gotta take this guy away. Sorry about that, that you lost your gears. Three little race cars drafting down the back. Drafting, do you know what drafting? Usually we feel a draft, right? But in a race car, drafting means you don't push on the gas. You just zoom along. One hits debris, that's a junk in the way and his tire is going flat. Oh, see, it got a hiss, and he hit, got a hole in his tire. So he went to the pit and the crew knew what to do, but the tire rolled away. And then there were two. Oh boy, we're close, aren't we? Now, Two little race cars down to the wire. One over her heats and down, oh my goodness, he catches fire. And the corner workers, they're the people at the different corners with some water to spray. One little race car wow, down for the day. Sorry, guy, you're gone. How many are left? You're right, only one's left. Wonder who's gonna win? Well, one little race car takes the checkered flag. That's the end of the race. And he's off to the winner's circle, his first win in the bag. Well, the fans all cheered and the race car driver said, all little race fans, it's time to go to bed. Good night. So there's the little race car that was there and had so much fun. We'll put it right up here for the moment because at least he was able to win the race, wasn't he? And there are, were some sentences and there's a game that we can play called Scrambled Sentence. And here's a sentence from our story. Two of the cars were out. How many were left at that time? Hmm, a scrambled sentence means that the words aren't in the right order. We're going to have to get them in the right order, aren't we? So what's the first word going to be? What does the first word start with in a sentence? A capital, you're right. So the first word is 10. Can we tell what the last word's going to be? It has a period at the end, you're right. So we know that track is the last one. So what are 10 things that are there? <gasps> 10 cars, but they're special, aren't they? 10 race cars. Oh, what are they doing? What are they doing? Oh, oh look at this. Oh, but they're little. Maybe we left a word out. That's possible. So it could be 10 little race cars. Zoom, there you are. 10 little race cars, what are they doing? They are zoom zooming, aren't they? Zooming around the track. That's where they're going, around the track. 
And that's how we unscramble sentences. We can look at another sentence and remember, I can see what the first word is, but you have to think about it. Here's another one. So they were going around the track, but this is a capital O, so where does that word go first? And what's the last word? With a period, isn't it? Hmm. And one, one of the cars did what? One flips over. What does it do? Oh dear. And what does it do? Oh, it lands. Boom. Doesn't it? It lands on its back. There's that last word, isn't it? Do we have time for one more sentence? Should we try one more? Okay, we're gonna try one more. Hmm, let's try this one. And then if we have time, we will do one more. But let's look at, oh, the same first word in this sentence. Let's put this one up. Okay, look at this. Here's a capital O again. So there it goes. One, and then the last word track right i wonder what this is going to be about one little is it a little race car again little race remember what they did after the car fell on its back the race car what did they do they cleared they took it and cleared one little race car cleared off what is that word the track that's right so they didn't want it to be in the way and get hit by the other cars did it well i wonder how much time we have now hmm should we yeah we're gonna do one more okay i love this one because it's the very end of the race and this is one hmm, that starts with the word one again oh my goodness huh there is one and uh, do you think it's one race car well let's see what the last word is Flag. And then we got another hmm, little, whoa, one little race car. Look at that. What did it do? It takes the, what is that? That black and white flag is called a checkered flag. That's right. So these are sentences from our story. And when you take a sentence from the story, you're doing scrambled sentences. I hope you enjoyed that story, the 12 little race cars. And then there was only one, right? Well, during that story and before the story, and after the story, we did some activities from my book, Family Time Reading Fun. One of the activities we did was called Before, During, and After, because you can ask questions before you read, during reading, and after reading. You can talk about the title and the authors. That's what we did, didn't we? Scott Pruitt and his wife, Judy, wrote that book, and he's a real race car driver. And what do you see on the cover? You can ask about that. During the reading, what do you think about? And that's why I was asking questions for children to think about what you're reading as you read. And then after reading, did you like that book? I was asking you that just a little bit ago. 
There's another thing that you can do after reading a story like that is fill out a story map that's in my book about, and the children at school do this all the time, about the title, the authors, illustrators, those that draw the, do the pictures and images, the characters in the book, the setting, and the plot and problem and ending. Another activity that we did, we did it early, before we even started, was that activity called breaking up is hard to do, where you can say the beginning and the ending sound. Those beginning and ending sounds are called onset. That's the beginning sound in a word, a rhyme, but it's R-I-M-E, is the ending sound. And helping children hear sounds helps them do what we call, you know, different letter sounds, phonemic awareness. So we did the race car sounds like car, we could have done dr I or ast or z -um. and I had these words here to help us remember and know how we can take the word, break them up, and on the book, in the book, on uh, page 35, I have words about soccer, words about baseball, and words that we will see from food and drinks and animal words. The one that we did at the very end was the sentence scramble. So we want children to remember that you can take words from the story, scramble them up, and have them put them back together, and it helps them understand the meaning of the story. Well, I hope you enjoyed the story, the activities, well, thank you so much for being with us today. We want to encourage you to please either like or comment on our Facebook page and the OC Reads Facebook page for United Way, or you can look at the YouTube and comment and you can get something very special. Your name could be is, will be put in a drawing if you comment or like it or ask any questions. And if your name is chosen, you get a $25 electronic card, gift card to Target and a book and things that are so special. So I hope you'll comment or ask us questions and we hope you'll see us again in another week.